Well, I finally got my crew up here. Got my son, Stephen. He's home from the Marine Corps off to the left. Wait for the camera, Stephen. And then my father off to the right, that's Lee Shan Sr. He's the one that taught me how to build stuff. Of all the gifts he's given me, that's probably the best gift he gave me was he taught me how to build. We got some tools that we've been using this morning. Stephen bought a brand new chainsaw, which is really nice because when you got a brand new bar and chain and a brand new saw, when you're cutting through this softwood, it cuts pretty nice. We've been able to make pretty nice cuts on the corners. My father's holding a slick. That's a tool that he gave me when I was a kid. I've had that for years, but you use that if you're uh, trying to skin the top of your log down to set another log or whatever, you use that to skin them over. And Stephen's got an old chisel that we use to do the corners over here when we cleaned out the corners. But we've got we're two layers up on logs. We put our corners up. We got them braced so they're plumb. And we're finally, we're getting some work done. Put it on the inside. Let's take a measurement. Way in. As you can see, the... Floor came out good, the logs are going up pretty good. Got some good help back here. You want your joints nice and tight, so always measure every one, cut them tight, and then pound them down in with a rubber mallet. If you use a regular hammer, you end up leaving tracks all over your log. We don't want these logs looking like a Boy Scout did it in a dark closet with a dull hatchet. Well, we've got a lot of work done in the last day and a half, two days. All the back logs were up a little over six feet. Those are all done. And uh, so now I just got to do the finish up the two sides and uh, get the gable ends done. But we had a really good couple of days. Got a lot of work done. And uh, the floor came out nice and level. Everything's all good. So we're done for the day. Last week, when I had Stephen and Dad up here to help me, we got the back wall done. That's our top plate right there. It's a nice straight log. Came out nice and level all the way across it. I've got a few knots on the top that I've got to knock off, but all of our rafters will be laying on top of that. It's a little bit over six feet, and then it'll go up on the other side. It'll go up to about eight or nine feet so that we've got some pitch on it so the water can run off it. These logs were perfectly white last week when we laid them, but since then it's been extremely humid and rainy, so they've started getting a little bit of, I don't know if you'd call it mildew or what, but there's some discoloration on the logs. I've had this happen before when I'm building. We'll just take a green scrubby pad like you do your dishes with and put some bleach on it, scrub them up, and they'll come right back nice. I remember what Dick Prenicky said uh, when he was building his cabin up in Alaska, how after he laid all the logs, he hated to cut window frames in them and cut the chimney in, but it's got to be done. So I'm getting ready to do the same thing. You fit these logs so they all go together good, and, and you end up cutting some of them up. We ended up, we got the door frames all done. We used a six foot level to mark out the logs. We used the slick and the draw shaved to plane everything down. It's kind of important really to do that if you don't want a lot of saw tracks. If you use a chainsaw for everything, sometimes you end up with a bunch of saw tracks. You don't want that, so I like using the old hand tools. Planed everything down with those. Your window's got to be good and square. We checked everything was plumb and level. All four corners are perfectly square, so we know the window's going to work good. Pounded it all in with the wooden mallet, too. Again, you don't want a bunch of tracks all over your wood. <clears throat> we got our top plate on here, and I'm just getting ready. I'm going to start. I've almost got that gable end finished, so I've got to put in my first rafter so that I can fill in on the gable end. This plate is nice and level. We put the six foot level across it and it's nice and level. But it's a piece of cedar and it's got all kinds of little small knots on it. Uh, those knots on the top, they've all got little humps in them. And just in case the raft is falling, those humps, I want to get rid of them. So I thought I'd show everybody the difference between a chisel and a slick. A chisel is made to be pounded on with a hammer. And this one should have a metal ring on it. The metal ring's gone. i got to replace the metal ring. But a chisel like that is made to be pounded on with a hammer. But if anybody's never seen a slick and how a slick works, it kind of looks like a giant chisel, but you don't pound on it. Years ago, before my dad gave this to me, somebody pounded on the end of this one. You can see they chipped a little piece of the handle out. But uh, a slick is actually made to be used uh, just with arm power. You don't pound on it. It's a nice big heavy tool. 
and uh, you grip it in your hands like this and you slide it and you kind of use it like a hand plane. And one other point is when you're using it, you take your, your beveled edge like that. A lot of people do the same thing with a chisel. If your work surface is down here and you use it like that, it has a tendency to dig in. Same thing with a chisel when you're pounding. You actually want to turn it around and have that beveled edge on the bottom and that's how you use it. You use it upside down and that way you're not digging into your wood. You just hold it like that, push it along. That's all there is to it. Good tool. Every log builder should have one. Got the gable end finished. Those last three logs up there took about as long to lay or longer than all the rest of the logs in there. There's a lot of fitting. Everything come out right. That's what your corner should look like when it's all finished. We took the log that was over in the corner of the original cabin, just recycled it, put it right there, fit perfect. It's coming together. Got the uh, first rafter in place, windows boxed in. This log right here on the old cabin, that's that's not burned, that's tar. There used to be a, a shed addition on this side of the camp years ago, but and that's actually, that's where you can see my first rafter right over there. That's where my uh, rafters are going to lay, is right where that tar line is. But over here, that log has got an awful kink in it, and I've zipped it with my chainsaw a little bit to get it started, but I've got to go up there with my uh, slit and peel that down and get that ready, so... We'll just uh, keep working at that till it's done, but that's going pretty good. We'll get that smoothed out and it'll be a good place to lay our rafters on. I picked seven logs that were all about the same size, cut them for rafters. We snapped a chalk line up at the top and set all the rafters to that, notched them in to fit the log that was on the old camp. All of these logs were about four and a half and five inches on this small end. So I took the two smallest logs, put them on the outside edge, and then I just took a string and you just run a string from one log to the other and then these logs here if they needed to be notched a little bit just took the draw shave or the slick and peeled them down a little and as you can see everything laid right in place it's just as flat as can be across the top of that that way we put our boards on we won't be waving up and down we want everything to be level getting ready to put in the last little filler in here between the raft of logs A nice tight fit. Toenail these 16 penny spikes in to hold it in place. I always try to put my spikes where they're not going to show. We're done. Kind of finish out that last gable end with logs and we'll be able to put a roof on it in a little bit. Normally I would have put a little more pitch on the roof, but in order to get it underneath the eaves of the other camp, couldn't go any higher. It's enough, not any too much, but it'll do. Getting ready to put this last corner in, and uh, I took it out of the old camp, <clears throat> but it doesn't quite fit here, so I've got to skin it down. I've got to run the chainsaw down, make it fit. Now that I'm older, I need to wear glasses to see all my lines anyway, but it's good to have your eye protection on and wear your hearing protection too. When you're calling moose in the fall, it's pretty important to have your hearing. There's different ways you can fill in between your logs. What I do is just take uh, inch boards. My dad actually did these on his table saw, but you just take rough sawed inch boards and you put your blade at a 45 run the board through, get the angle, and then flip it over and do the same thing so you end up with these little triangle pieces. All you really need for tools to do this is a chisel to knock off any high spots. If you've got any knots or any high spots on here, if you knock them off with that chisel it'll lay easier. A nice sharp handsaw like this to cut the boards. They cut really easy, they're fine. Uh, the cabins that I fixed up here, we fill all the cracks with this great stuff. You shake it up before you use it. We're going to fill the seam, and then we're going to put that uh, piece of trim over it.
You don't need to use a lot of that stuff. It really expands. Uh, just enough to fill your seam. Anything that comes out by, most of this stuff's probably going to come out on the inside. And before I finish off the inside, I'll just cut it off with a utility knife. Nail them into the log underneath it. You got a nice tight seam there. Looks good. That's all there is to it. You can see what the logs look like before they've been filled and trimmed up. And that's what they look like after you put your little finished pieces in. As you can see, I got some really nice wide pine boards. They're 14 inches wide. We're going to do the whole roof of those. Coming out pretty good I think. Nice and flat. Rafters I use are working pretty good. It's been a good morning. I uh Got all the drip edge and the starter shingles on the edges. And then I did about three rows of shingles uh, from down on the ground. I could reach them, got them started. It's easier to do it from the ground than it is up on the roof and work behind you. I'm at the point now where I'm going to go up on the roof. Today is a good day. It's overcast and a lot cooler than it has been. So it's a good day to lay shingles. I'm just about finished up for the day. I couldn't be any happier with how the roof came out. It went right in between the two logs. Till next time, we're signing off.